What's going on everybody, this is Afro Think Tank and today this is gonna be a very special video. Very special, why? I'm gonna be able to prove a whole bunch of points in one video. It's just, it's set up that way, okay? It is set up that way, right? So I had to do it this way. Now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to jack some of this video. I'm lit literally just gonna play this video. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna prove, all right? Now it says biracial woman gets called a pick me for making the blah blah blah. You'll hear what it's all about in a second, right? This is what I want to prove. FBA, right? Ados, those group of people, these mysterious black people that's on the internet that want to separate themselves. From Africans, the ones that's causing, for the most part, all the problems. Now we do know there are some dark-skinned ones there, a few of them, but for the most part, if you notice, all of them for them are biracials, right? A lot of them about and look at you got the different. You got the golden sphere, you got the biracials, right? I mean, you got you got what's the dude? Uh, my angry uh, biracial. Uh, what's this? My angry biracial. He got a whole channel where he he's dedicated to bashing, right? He just switched up now. He's dedicated to ba ba bashing black men on behalf of black women, right? He but he's like Arabic and black. If you notice, all the people, all of a sudden, that's anti-African, for the most part, are usually light skin, like biracial. Not like I'm light skin, but both my parents are black. I just, with my family, it's weird with my family. Like, uh, uh, both my parents are black, but my grandmom is a dark. My grandfather, like, we, uh, we just be making it all. I got a, I got a, a, a two light skinned uncles and aunts that made a dark skinned daughter, right? And both my parents are light skinned, but both their parents are dark skinned. You know, it's just, I don't. Know, it it works out. That it happens that way, right? So I'm just light skinned, but I'm I'm definitely just black for the most part. You know, we got got that standard issue white in there, you know, because you know history. But for the most part, I'm I'm black, right? And and I've got I've gotten made fun of for being light skinned, of course, right? But I've also made fun of I I've also made fun of dark skinned people for being dark. Think about the things that they're mad at, right? They're mad at things that are elementary. Who the hell is actually upset or offended by the word kata? Nobody, no grown adult, right? And after it being explained to you that a kata means, you know, foreigner or something like that, you should accept that as a rational human being. And if some people took the word and just changed it, say, yeah, it is something derogatory. Oh, well, so it's a derogatory or a funny little jokey name some black people made for, for African Americans. But isn't that what African people do? Isn't that what we do? Don't we have plenty of jokey little disrespectful names for other people too? I mean, we just get in the same medicine that we give out because it's the same people. Because we the same people. Because we're the same people. So we do the same things. Right? We're not that different because we are not different. Because we're the same. They just remember how to speak their language. And they just remember more the cultural traditions. And they just remember how to cook more of the traditional foods. That's it. We just cook less of the traditional foods. We just simply know less of the traditional cultural practices. But we, other than that, we are literally the same, right? But here's the problem. The, 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 the biracials, right? They don't feel connected to Africa the way us, us African-Americans who have two parents are connected. Good think about it. African Americans have never ever been anti-African. We are the most African between us and Jamaicans. Us and Jamaicans would probably fight over the only beef us and Jamaicans ever had was who the hell is more pan-African and who's more black power than the other. That's it. That's it. That is it, and that's all. We have we us and the Caribbeans have been brethren this entire time, fighting against and dealing with this shit together this entire time the only people that ain't been on board is most of the black latinos that we know of but we're probably discovering now that we were wrong about that 
there's a lot of ignorance down there in the black Latino world, of course, but just a lot with us too. They just got their own particular set of issues and we got our particular set of issues. We have identity crisis because it's a side effect of having our identity taken from us, the thing that they did to us. They got, they even got us using the same defense they used to use against us when we used to blame them for, you know, enslaving us. Oh, well, you sold your own. That's the thing they used to say to defend themselves and we used to look at them like bullshit. And look, you got these biracials using that very same argument. Y'all forgot that. People, memories are short, man. Everybody's on that TikTok time. Everybody's on that TikTok time. All of a sudden, African Americans are blaming, blaming Africans for slavery. Of course, there's always a bunch of sambos. There's a few sambos. But no, do you think, but, but the, some of them sambos was forced to do it. And we know they was. And we know what the Europeans did. And let's stop acting like we don't know who did it. Who funded it, who did it, who threatened it. It doesn't matter. They went in there and they did it. And 99.99% of the time they went in there with their guns and killed and took what they wanted to take. That small little portion of responsibility that the, the that some of these greedy kings and rulers had, that that that's inconsequential to what happened. But yet, these biracial people, right? Not all of them. But the majority of them, that's why they don't show them faces. Because they know we would know. That's why they don't show their faces. So that's why they have to detach. Their goal is to delineate. To say, because the only thing they can say is that they black. But notice they're never going on the, the white side. It's always just black people. The only smoke is for their own. They don't have smoke for the white side that rejects them automatically. We know that they are rejected automatically, right? But when they say they are rejected by their black side, they say they was making fun of. They say they was being teased, right? The thing that black people do, that's what we all do. We all play the dozens. Literally, we all play the dozens. That's what we, that's one thing black people do, no matter what country you go to, we're going to be talking trash. You just got to be able to take it. If you condition, you got to be able to take it. Just what happens that some groups are better dish outers than others. Some people can take it better than others. That's all it is. Right? So, FBA, ADOS, free, all these people that want to separate, they have they're making false identity. Now I'm a I'm a pretendian. I'm a I'm an imaginary group of people that nobody has ever heard, no proof, no nothing. It's, and it's not, you know what? It's not even that hard to to think that they will believe that. I mean, people believe that that a person can get eaten by a whale and survive for three days, right? People think that women, a, 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 a little child, can just get pregnant just miraculously. They, they think that, right? There's people who think that you know that. We, we just got here like 3,000 years ago There's people who believe Adam and Eve There are people who believe the Bible The Quran literally Fairy tale Fairy tale they believe it Word for word there's people who believe that Right we know the cults Existed we know there's people who can believe Something so strong that they would kill themselves Right So we know that people are susceptible As intelligent as we are As intelligent and capable as we are capable of being a lot of people are just not using those capabilities very well at all they're not using their brains at all they're literally sheep mentally and they and they well it's anything that releases the dopamine in their brains that make them feel good you know about themselves they're gonna go that route and they will use cognitive dissident to block out anything else that's gonna mess up that half of them and the thing is those biracial people have an identity crisis because the whites, they, they get, they get the same treatment as the rest of us black people by the white people. They don't get special treatment. They still, so they get all the smoke. They get it, get it. And the only people that know, you got their family members that know. And even them treat them differently. The white side, they know it and they feel it. Right. The black side is the only one that's ever embraced them. But the black side have always, because we always talking shit, especially about light skinned people and dark skinned people. That's why in this country we got a light skin issue complex and we got the damn dark skin issue complex. 
right? The only people that I guess is okay, the people in the middle, huh? The brown ones, I guess, right? They don't seem to have much of an issue as much. But then they got their own set of issues, right? They're just there's something else they'll pick. They have a low self-esteem about or something. Might as well have some issues about or something. Right? But that's what it is. It's an issue with connection. And you know it's a threat? Because they had at least, you know, oh, we talk shit after the marriage. Most of us who got lucky enough to have a black and a, a full black, you know, black parents, both of them. We lucky enough, you know, we know African, we black, everybody's like that. But now, here comes these other Africans, right? From Africa. Both of them got a black father and black mother, right? So they coming over here. And then they coming over here and mixing with us, the African American. Because like I said, there is no actual problem with Africans and African Americans other than the occasional miscommunication because obviously cultures are different. You know, things are going to happen sometimes. Other than those things that happen with everybody always and will never not happen as long as we exist as entities on this planet, you know, because we're all human beings and we all got all different types of personalities and people are assholes and people are sweet and some people are evil, some people are good, just what it is, right? But for the most part, Everybody knows that when Africans come over here, we all get along. Women, the only ones that be butting heads is women, right? If you notice on social media right now, women are starting a whole bunch of shit now internationally because now they're all talking shit on each other because you know how catty they can be. They love this shit. This is, they just, they out here just starting all sorts of conflicts, you know, with themselves for fun. It's things they would have did in their little neighborhoods with their little girlfriends on the steps. You know, talking trash about the other girls down the street on the steps, right? But instead of having is happening on the steps, what's happening is they just doing it online, and then instead of writing in their diaries, they just putting it on their Instagram. That's all. They're just being who they are, just happening online, right? So they're gonna do that, and so a lot of us are taking a, a lot of what they saying like more seriously than it really is. It's more than it's, a lot of it's just women being catty, right? But in this case, we're dealing with we so we got we got that. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that in I mean, I'm, I'm talking my ass off. Okay. Well, because this is important, guys. You're gonna see that in there. What I just said about the FBA ADO the 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 profile of the people that's causing all this mysterious uh stuff online. Because these people don't come outside. They don't you don't see these people really gather that much, right? They can't really come together because then it'll be obvious, right? They gotta keep their fake avatar and pictures up, right? It'll be obvious. So you're going to see that. You're also going to see a continental African, right? A woman, right? Who should all be, you know, for all purposes, should be caddy along with the rest of the women. You're going to see how real Nigerians who are now getting online and waking up, you're going to see how they, what they think about African-Americans for real. For real. Not the Nigerians that you see over here. The ones that, like y'all, like, some people like to say, ran away. Not the mi upper middle class Nigerians that you feel like that they say they better than that you feel like th you say they better than you sometimes, right? Because y'all keep forgetting their classes too. It's not just everything's not about race. You got class, right? I'm talking about the everyday nine to five Nigerians, the one your equivalent. You're gonna see what they think of you, so you're gonna see that because you're gonna see what us Pan Africans been telling you. They love us over there. They love us over there. They welcome us over there. They admire us over there. They're watching us over there, right? We are the we are follow we are leading the way, the ones that are responsible. But we are leading the way still, and others are being inspired. And they're about to start being leaders in their respective directions that they need to go, right? As a group, that's what we're doing, everybody. So you're gonna see that. Then you're gonna see African Americans, okay? So keep in mind, you're gonna see FBA Ados and them weird them guys. You're going to see a, a continental African, right? Then you're going to see African-Americans, right? Real African-Americans, like myself, who all, 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 basically all African-Americans are Pan-Africans. Almost by definition. Who understand, who, who know who they are, are automatically Pan-African. Because it's an ideology, it's not a group. It's just a way of thinking. African-Americans who are proud to be African and love Africa and we just got to get enough money to go because a lot of them we just ain't, can't afford to go but they want to go right you're going to see all of that so you're going to see all three groups that are involved in this 
in this one video and i just i've been talking but it's very important so we can all get a grasp of what's really going on and keep in mind i said yes there are dark skin fba people some of them they just be on a ride and if you look at some of these guys when they talking you don't see any information in their eyes you look you just see the emptiness inside that these guys are just they just they looking for something and they all form up uh, Hebrew Israelites or some former nation of Islam. They always connect. They 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 hop from from thing to thing to thing to thing. That's their thing. That's their, how they get their dopamine fix. They jump to something. They attach themselves. They believe it and they shut all logic out just to hold on to that thing because it's an identifier. It's something that makes them proud, makes them feel good about themselves. You know, because they just have to be everything other than what they truly are. All right. So you're going to see all the spectrums, all the parties in this. So we know everybody and what's going on. Let's just keep it 100. This is the real deal all in one video. So without further ado, I'm going to let this thing go. We're going to play a little bit of, bit of it. And I think my point would have been driven. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section after you watch this. I'm out. Let me guess your mama white. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. <laughs> hi guys welcome back to the channel once again it's your girl Dumevilia. if this is your first time coming across my channel you're welcome i do hope you decide to subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber you guys know that i love you it's so good to have you here welcome back so before we proceed with the video please i just want to state that this video is strictly for educational purposes please do not stretch out the person or the people that i talk about in this video do not send them any kind of hate threats violence hate speech this channel does not support any of that so today's video is about this biracial woman that was getting dragged dragged to filth on tiktok for coming out to talk about the black national anthem now see you guys i'm even happy that there's a black national anthem i'm ashamed to say this but because i'm learning a part of me is not ashamed i'm learning more about the african-american people and the culture and all of that so I recently found out about the Black National Anthem when the Super Bowl happened and Cheryl Lee Ralph just gave that beautiful performance. I saw the Black excellence, the glory of it all. The way she sang it with so much pride with the Black backup singers putting on white and with her red. It was so powerful. It was so beautiful. I was grinning from ear to ear watching it like you guys. <laughs> So obviously, you know, that performance actually ticked a lot of people off. They didn't like the fact that black people came to perform what they call a black national anthem, which I found out that people just call it that because black people sing it a lot in black gatherings, black schools, black community. Like it's just a song that represents a lot for black people that so much so that it was dubbed the black national anthem and you guys i'm here for it okay but anyway before i just go on blabbing let me play the video made by this biracial woman i'm an american i don't need a black national anthem just like white people don't need a white national anthem just like we don't need black drinking fountains and white drinking fountains i'm just an american and the national anthem the real one belongs to all of us all of us americans and skin color doesn't matter so she made that video obviously you know not happy with the fact that there's a black national anthem and in my mind i'm like sis are you just finding out that there's a black national anthem or are you just saying this because a lot of the are complaining about the fact that 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 song was performed at the super bowl is she saying it just to echo what the palm color people are saying or she said it because she's just finding out that there's a black national anthem maybe she's mad that she didn't know about it before now i don't know or is she just doing it to spark up conversation or for cloud? Like, what is her reason for coming out to say that at this point in time? I wonder. Anyway, so let me play people's responses because people definitely had a mouthful to say to her. I'm an American. I don't need a black national anthem. And it's a good goddamn thing that the qualifications to participate in this conversation wasn't being American. It's for coloreds. And I can already tell that you wasn't raised by two of us, if you know what I mean. Half of Black History Month done came and went. Stay in your lane, all right? Not too much. Be for real. I would like to give an example of what it looks like when Black American history is not accurately taught in schools. I'm an American. I don't need a Black national anthem. 
Just like- so this person is biracial, and um, I believe from what I've seen so far, she has revealed that she does not have a black mama. And apparently there's this whole discussion about biracial people who are black and white and the difference between having a black mama and a white mama, and it shows. Like, I really think there should be a, a case study on that whole phenomenon. But I digress. I want to talk about what she's saying. Just because you refuse to acknowledge your blackness and your black history and there's a strong possibility that you are strongly unaware of your black history doesn't mean the rest of us black people who are either proud of our blackness for being biracial or 100% black and appreciate our blackness. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we do not appreciate our blackly black things. And I want you to also think about this idea of you being just an American. See, the difference is you can pass as being just an American. Most black people cannot. And we can tell that by the police interactions as well. The school interactions, the home loans interactions, the access to uh, equal pay. We, we We can tell these things. What you said is not profound. What you said is ignorant. Because our country literally separates us according to race. Six categories of race, according to the U.S. Census. It's in our job applications, in our home loan applications, in our um, education applications, in our medical forms. It is in everything that we do. Race plays a factor into everything that we do. And when you don't acknowledge that, it doesn't make you profound. It gives you willful obtuseness, and that may not be a word, but it is today. What you have also done is say some real anti-black stuff and pander to non-black people, thinking that you're profound, because it's popular to crap on black people in the United States of America. And when you actually get to learning about black American history, and you become enlightened, you'll realize just how ignorant you were with that statement. So this content creator says that she doesn't need a black national anthem, just like white people don't need a black, a white national anthem. I can appreciate your sentiment except for one very simple fact. Francis Scott Key, the writer of the national anthem of the Star Spangled Banner as we know it here in America, was a slave owner, a very wealthy lawyer, slave owner, at the time that he wrote it. But that's not a reason not for, for us not to embrace his lyrics or his song. The reason for us as African Americans not to embrace it is found in the third verse of this poem turned Star Spangled Banner turned anthem for this country. And I quote, And where is that band who so vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion A home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. The star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. This verse is literally about capturing and killing people who just simply wanted to run for their freedom. Yes, I'm an American. I was born here. But don't tell me that this song is for me. But my ancestors died because of the very lyrics of this poem from a known rape slave owner who wrote these words. I can't embrace that. I can't embrace that idea. I don't hate the Star Spangled Banner, but don't tell me I don't need something that speaks to my heritage, that speaks to who I am as an African American. So you can have the Star Spangled Banner, but as for me, I'm going to lift every voice and sing.